All right, so I wanted to continue on the previous lesson where we looked at using the grow and shrink along with motion paths to create these animated uh, zoom in effects. Now, in Joe's original tutorial, we were looking at just zooming in on a specific object. And I played with that a little bit and then kind of wanted to play with the uh, parallax effect where we could actually move some other objects around. So in, in Joe's example, we wanted to zoom in on a specific object, right? So getting closer, figure out how to uh, zoom in, say, to reveal a computer screen. And let's say that screen, though, was hidden behind the woman, right? So maybe it wasn't even revealed. And as we get up and close to the object, that's when we discover, you know, the computer. That's what she's looking at. Maybe she's looking at something on the screen that, that she shouldn't be. Um, so anyway, here's kind of what I was playing with. So it's, it's playing off the zoom effect. Let me just click play. But now we're zooming in and we're revealing objects that really weren't available or visible in the opening scene or at the beginning of the slide, right? So we have a focus on the, uh, the fly catching boy right here and then uh, the back of this gal's head. Z click play or however we want to initiate this. And now we're able to set up another scene. So it's a nice way to use the, the element of surprise right before you transition to another chapter or another slide. So let's go ahead and just open up PowerPoint, kind of look at what we did, and then um, uh, maybe see some other ways to modify it. But um, essentially what we have here, and I am working in 2010 again, but uh, the, really the, the effects will all carry over. So selection and visibility, I can turn that off. And what I really have is just a, a layered uh, file here. So looks like there's a lot of motion paths. Looks like there's a lot of stuff going on, but there really isn't much. So if I come over here and I, let me minimize the top of that. And we look at just what's going on. So if I take the text titles off, so she can stay, there's the desk, and then there's the guy right there and the background. So initially, we just have her moving off to the side, and this is all one image, right? So if I, if I, even if I turn her off, this is just a desk that's been stretched out beyond the canvas. And if I click play, it just moves over. So it's another way to use elements that are off the slide area and then bring them on at, either at, the, at the end of an animation or at the end of a, uh, another object transitioning that was uh, stacked above them. So we combine that with this gal right here whose back is to us. So she's moving off the stage, off the slide area, and then this is coming around. So it even gives even more um, of that reveal effect because we start to focus on her as well while she's moving off. And then right there comes the, uh, the object. So what is that? And then we threw in the background, and I don't know if the background actually gets big. Yeah, the background moves over a little bit, but we're not moving it as far, right? Because it's farther in the distance. We don't need it to move exactly. Uh, you can see the motion path for the wall is much shorter than it is for the desk. And then we just brought in a few more elements. So just another idea or just kind of playing around with some other objects and just using layering in PowerPoint and the motion path effect to create even a more uh, dynamic or rich uh, transition scene. And I just add the text at the very end as another way to kind of set up the final slide. So hope you enjoy it. And um, really, uh, thanks to Joe Deegan for uh, really creating some inspiring uh, tutorials today.